What's up guys, this is Dimitri and not many of you may know about Rocket other than a few reviews we've done of their product, but I have a feeling that uh, that will change the next year since they're on a path to launch some really innovative peripherals. They're showing some at CES and uh, we stopped to take a look, but before we go into all the kind of stuff, a shout out from our sponsors. Big thanks to NVIDIA, Gigabyte, Fantex and NCIX for our CES coverage. So first, Rockout is launching a new optical sensor called the Owl Eye, which is based on the Pixar 3360 series. It's a fantastic sensor, and Rockout's own iteration is the 3361, which has been tuned for optimal performance between 500 and 3000 DPI, which is where Rockout claims 90% of gamers spend their time. The sensor will be available on the Cone EMP and the Cone Pure, and the new wireless leader, uh, which supposedly has one-to-one -one accuracy between the mouse motion and cursor movement on the screen. And we know that the sensor is very well equipped to handle wireless operation, so the leader is definitely in the high end for wireless mice. And so the leader is based off the tie-on, with some lighting disabled for improved battery life, but it also promises to deliver all the performance of this wired mouse within a wireless form factor. This means it's supposed to deliver lag-free experience with virtually no latency, and this is supposed to be uh, their response to uh, Logitech's excellent G900 and Razer Mamba mice. To accomplish that, it uses a 2.5 4 gigahertz wireless band, a thousand hertz polling rate to communicate with this massive base station. This is where they could have done something a bit low key, but in my eyes, the dog is just way too large. The base station allows the mouse to rest vertically, uh, so we're like showcasing the mouse when it's charging and indicates real time mouse charge as well when the leader is not docked. So I got to use the mouse and play some CSGO. The mouse felt great. Uh, I was surprised uh, at how light it felt for such a large body with a built in battery, but I'm not sure the tie-in frame is the best choice for wireless iteration, as I prefer personally uh, smaller mice for gameplay. The good thing though about the wireless expansion for mice is acceptance from gamers of a fantastic sense of performance, and all you have to worry about is really battery life, which spans around 20 hours, so between charges, and if you don't want wireless operation, you can also use the included USB cable for direct input. And so price is set to compete with the G900, uh, as they are pretty much the same sensor, with this different bodies. The other thing we saw at Rockout was the ISQ keyboard, which is just a boring membrane keyboard, but with a little spice of analog switches for WASD and QE switches. And so these new membrane switches allow for variable pressure to be used, and when used uh, with supported games, inputs can be uh, drastically affected. So for example, a hard press would cause your character to run, lightly holding down the key will lead uh, to like creeping along, while a mid-pressure hold will allow you to simply walk. And so these functions can be mapped with then Rockout's Swarm software and can be completely disabled if necessary and also customized uh, for your preference. So we tried this concept out for some time in the game. It was a bit hard to get a handle on, especially since the three level actuation don't feel that great on the membrane switch. And obviously after playing games for years, introducing analog technology into your movement on the keys presents a unique challenge. It's like learning to ride a bicycle all over again, but it might be awesome for driving in GTA 5, like in the car, so you can cruise around so you have a bit of speed control, but maybe completely useless in many other games. And so the ISQ with pressure sensitive switches will retail for $100, while the less expensive ISQ Plus without the analog inputs will go for a more affordable $79, which is still a bit ridiculous for a non-mechanical keyboard, but hey, some gamers still prefer how membrane switches feel.